Working in the private sector was the best training ground for me to develop as a coach. It taught me how to build a brand, sell a program, and really a system. It taught me how to write it down. And, and Ted mentioned this, we were able to develop a speed system certification and have been able to certify coaches worldwide. This is a picture of me with the Auburn football strength staff a few years back where we were able to go down and certify their strength staff in the speed system. Working in the private sector also taught me how to recruit, um, specifically for the NFL Combine. I'd recruit about 100 players every year to try to get 25 players to prepare them for the NFL Combine. It taught me about relationships and relationships that are built on trust. It also taught me that those results will come, but not until the relationship is built. So if there's any young coaches on the webinar today, I just wanna tell you not to limit yourself to one sport or maybe working in the private sector or not the private sector. I've learned if you can coach, you can coach regardless of sport, age, or level. When I'm talking at conferences or just talking to strength coaches in general, the first question that I get after they look at my resume of 15 plus years working with football players, They'll ask me, what's the biggest difference in training football players and basketball players? You know, during my time with the Bengals, I was blessed to work with Robert Harris, who's the head strength coach for the Kentucky men's basketball team, and Mike Rayfeld, who's the uh, head strength coach for the UConn Huskies men, men's basketball team. And we discuss this topic often. And I think if you look at them, you know, the first and foremost is a training history of the athlete. My first year here at Indiana, I was training our freshmen in week one. And one of the athletes, as I told them we were going to do a barbell complex, they asked me, what is a barbell? And it hit me right there that I'm working with a, a blank slate. You know, the different body types. Obviously, I'm working with long limb players here at Indiana. A lot of ectomorph body types has definitely been a big difference. The calendar year, basketball in college is a two semester sport. It's one of the only sports that is actually spans across the fall and spring semester. Then the end season model, you know, finding rhythm. In the Big Ten, we play nearly every night because of our TV contracts. So we play on ESPN, Fox, and on Big Ten Network. And that puts you in a situation where you have to play seven nights a week. So finding rhythm is really, really difficult. Practices when you're in the NFL or even in college football, they look the same almost every week because you're either playing on Saturday or Sunday your lifts look the same each week and you can really follow progression in that and periodization. You know, the travel in football, college football, maybe you get on the plane four, five, six times a year. College basketball, it's 15 to 20 times per year. One of the biggest differences is the off season model and the length of that. My off season here, which any college strength coach that you would talk to would say June and July is the two biggest training months. If you go across campus here and you talk to the Indiana football strength coach, he gets the month of January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and then they start practice in August. So they're really getting seven months to develop their players. But the one thing that I've uh, learned that remains the same, regardless of sport, it comes down to the two R's, which is results and relationships. So before I get started here, I want you to think for a moment and answer these two questions. Number one, who evaluates you as a strength coach? And number two, how are you evaluated as a strength coach? In other words, what do you need to do to be considered successful in your craft? I decided to poll 10 of my colleagues who I, who I know personally that are strength and conditioning coaches and this is how they rank their job in terms of how they are evaluated. Number one was wins and losses. Number two was health of the team. Number three was strength and testing numbers. And number four was relationships with the players. I then asked them how they prefer to be evaluated. So taking those same four components, and asking them if it was up to them, how would you want to be graded on how you do your job? 
and ranking them first to last, it was relationships, number one. Strength gains, number two. Health of the team, number three. Wins and losses, number four. And I would just say, you know, if you look at the relationships being number one, if we're in it as coaches for the right reasons, then building relationships that come natural to us. Number two, strength gains. This is what we're paid to do. This is what we're taught to do. It's what we go to school to do, what we learn from our colleagues to do. So that would be number two. Number three, the health. I heard one of uh, a strength coaches one time say, strength coaches get too much credit when the team is healthy and too much blame when the team is injured. And I think there is some truth to that. And then last but not least, wins and losses. Ultimately, we're here to win games, be it at Indiana or whatever college you're at or whatever pro team you're working with, even at the high school level, you're here to win games. That's the part of the business. But basketball is a skill sport. One of my most humbling experiences as I started my journey here at Indiana four years ago was we played Indiana State. And it was my first time being on a college basketball sideline. And I thought to myself, you know, we're the Indiana Hoosiers. We're playing the in-state lower level team, Indiana State. We should have a great opportunity to beat up on these guys tonight. Long story short, they hit 18 three-pointers. It broke a record in Assembly Hall, and they ended up beating us. And it was one of the greatest experiences and most humbling experience that I had as a college basketball strength coach because it taught me that basketball is certainly a skill sport. So I'd ask you today, what is a win as an NCAA basketball strength and conditioning coach? Is it winning the conference? Is it going to the NCAA tournament? Is it training the conference player of the year? Is it having an NBA lottery pick, a 40 inch vertical jump, a 300 pound bench press, or making an impact beyond the weight room? In my four years at Indiana, we have not won a conference title. So did I fail? No, I don't think so, because when I lay my head down at night to sleep, I know I've made an effort to make an impact beyond the weight room. My uh, coaching philosophy changed in 2012, and I'm going to tell you a quick story about this player pictured here. His name is Chaz Alexa. He was a standout defensive lineman for the Pitt Panthers, who I recruited to come train with me for the NFL Combine. He agreed to it, and I was training these players, group of 20 players down in Naples, Florida. And we were a couple weeks out of the NFL Combine, and um, we had finished training on a Saturday afternoon, and I heard some of the players talking amongst themselves about going out and renting jet skis. And something just came over me, and, it, and I went to the players to tell them, you know what, that's probably not a great idea. You know, we're close to the Combine. I don't want you guys out on the jet skis and you get thrown off and you hurt a shoulder or something like that. I told him, you guys are on my watch down here. You know, your parents have trusted me. The NFL agent is paying me. They've trusted me. So let's just stay off the jet skis. Well, long story short, about five hours later, I got a phone call from another player and he was frantic and he said, I've got bad news. Chaz is missing at sea the last two hours. They found his jet ski floating in the Gulf. I was sitting with my wife at Cheesecake Factory in Naples, Florida, and just had a sick feeling come over me about how I was going to tell the parents and the media and everybody else that this player had died while he was training with me in Naples due to a jet ski accident. Long story short, with about 10 minutes left to go in the search, they had caught in helicopters and the rescue team and they found this player floating in the Gulf. They rushed him to the hospital, he ended, up he ended up living. But for the next week, I was really startled and I really started to look at coaching a different way. It hit me that these results, be it the 40 yard dash, the bench press, the vertical jump are temporary, but the relationships are eternal. And ever since then, I've coached with an eternal perspective. 
And what that means is that this, you will die, your athletes will die. What will the athletes say about me at my funeral? I learned that my passion is weights, but my purpose is people. And veteran NFL strength coach Johnny Parker once said, good coaches, they coach weights. Great coaches, they coach people. Thank you.